Hi there, this is Victor Pross speaking to you, anarchist artist. Okay, today we are going to talk about the clash that's, uh, that's between the anarchist and the objectivists, or objectivist libertarians in their clash with, uh, with anarchists. Um, this has been going on for decades, but this video really has been inspired by the recent uh, debate that has taken place place between anarchist um, Daniel Rothschild and quasi-objectivist uh, Jean Hellfield. And um, this recent debate that's taken place between uh, these two as uh, one of the more recent ones, but Jean Hellfield has taken under his belt various debates with other Anarchists, starting with, I believe, Stefan Molyneux, and uh, followed up by Larkin Rolls, I believe, and then Walter Block and um, Kinsella, I think. But I don't, I don't really consider that uh, an actual debate. <laughs> that particular episode that was more like a uh, throwing shit at each other. But basically, it was. Uh, kind of an embarrassing <laughs> video but forget about that one let's just move on to the ones that we can actually call can be called debates and that would include Stefan's debate with Jean Heilfield and um, Larkin Rose and uh, recently Daniel Rothschild now when it comes to the objectivists and I'm well versed in, ob in objectivism so I know the whole history of the clash between uh, Ayn Rand and Murray Rothbard and um, and, ju and just generally speaking, between objectivism and and, and anarchism, uh, Rand did not like uh, the libertarians, or at least of all uh, the anarchists. Uh, that she can she considered them to be lower than well shit, and uh, so it was not pretty. She uh, absolutely despised them, and uh, this is. Um, carried its way over to uh, modern times and with the recent uh, objectivists that are out there. They've taken to heart uh, Rand's discontent with the anarchists, to say the least, and the, uh, the catch-all uh, denunciation and dismissal uh, of anarchists uh, rests on basically one thing. Uh, their subjectivism the charge of subjectivism to the point of making them subjectivist anarchist zombies. Now, uh, when I speak of subjectivism, I'm not talking about the subjective theory of value that you find in economic studies, most particularly, of course, with the uh, the Austrian school. I'm not talking about that, okay? I'm not talking about the evil of, uh, I like vanilla ice cream and uh, you don't, you prefer chocolate and uh, how despicable you are, and uh, <laughs> I'm not talking about that kind of subjectivism. I'm talking about that the, when the objectivists use the word uh, subjectivism, and which is just basically within the realm, within the lexicon of, uh, uh, of uh, philosophy. Subjectivism in this case just means there is no, no objective truth. Everything is uh, it's just a matter of, uh, of an emotional whim that swells up in the mind of the individual. There's no objective external absolutes out there in the universe. Uh, it's just all, uh, uh, everything is predicated upon the particular whimsies of the individual. I mean, right across the board, universally, and across all things, right? So, um, but we'll, we'll get a better understanding of uh, sub what subjectivism is when employed by the objectivists as being used to, as a leveling uh, debate tactic against the, uh, the anarchists as we move along. Now, the, uh, to, to begin with, um, objectivist scholar Leonard Peikoff, who um, is the intellectual heir to objectivist philosopher Ayn Rand, uh, writes this about anarchism, and this, this quote will give you a very uh, uh, key insight into the nature of the objection. Now, anarchism, he writes, is the idea that there should be no government. In objectivist terms, this amounts to the view that every man should defend himself by using physical force against others whenever he feels like it, with no objective standards of justice, crime, or proof. 
Um, no, uh, that's not what anarchism means. <laughs> okay. This quote just annoys the living shit out of me. I can't tell you how much this quote annoys the living shit out of me for its just outrageous uh, falsehood and its sloppy scholarship. <laughs> there's, there's no anarchist I know of uh, defends using physical force against others whenever he feels like it as a serious idea to consider. That's not a serious idea to consider. And uh, philosophically principled anarchists are not going about talking about, yeah, just use physical force whenever you feel like it. Somebody gives you a dirty look, punch them in the face. You know, uh, it, it, it's, such, it's such fucking bullshit. But um, we can actually say in this case that uh, Peacock is objectively wrong, that uh, uh, the, the writings in uh, libertarian thought and anarchist thought uh, going on for more than 100 years now is rich, and its research, thought-provoking, profound, uh, serious, um, uh, dedicated, uh, brilliant, uh, uh, taken with a great deal of uh, philosophical rigor, and for Peacock just to come across and to uh, paint this 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 pop culture sex pistol. Uh, whimsy, uh, common view of, uh, of of anarchism as just going around punching people and hitting people whenever they feel like it, with no uh, objective uh, standards of justice, crime or proof. It, it's just ridiculous. It's just so fucking embarrassing. But anyway, um, now basically the um, the objectivists share some basic philosophical principles with two opposing philosophers. Okay, let's take a look at that now. Two opposing philosophers that the objectivists are influenced by, or Rand was at least anyway, and that would be John Locke, uh, explicitly John Locke. The objectivists embraced uh, John Locke for a lot of reasons, but but rather implicitly and maybe by default, or unwittingly, unwittingly, uh, another philosopher would be Thomas Hobbes. Now, in accord with Locke. For example, the objectivists agree with the idea of individual rights, property rights, uh, that rights are not granted by God or government, uh, men have rights by their nature, yada, yada, yada. But the objectivists also share some philosophical premises with Locke's opponent, and that being Thomas Hobbes. And we can see that with uh, in Jan Helfeld's case, you know, he's on a few occasions have quoted uh, Hobbes in opposition to making his arguments against the, the anarchists. Um, when it comes to uh, Thomas Hobbes, uh, his, he, his whole approach, Hobbes that is, is that man is, is not by nature a social animal. Man is not by nature a social animal and that society could not exist, civilized society could not exist, except by the power of the state. Now, this is also a premise that the objectivists accept. So they have their influence by, by uh, Locke. They're, they're influenced by Locke and by his uh, philosophical opponent, Thomas Hobbes. Now, according to objectivists, the absence of a centralized authority would lead to epistemological chaos. Let me repeat that. According to objectivists, the absence of a centralized authority would lead to epistemological chaos. For example, when it comes to terms such as a uh, force, or, or rights, liberty, aggression, retaliation, defense, etc., human beings are frothing at the mouth, make it up as you go, whim worshipping subjectivists. They conclude that an anarchist society would collapse into a subjectivist orgy of different meanings ascribed to concepts such as force and freedom, which would lead to an enormous bloodbath of rival gangs. One group would be advocating for freedom and their definition would be freedom from the course of power of the state, Another group would be arguing that the definition of freedom means uh, 
uh, uh, freedom from the factory owner. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, you know, they just have their clashes, and this would lead into a fight, and all hell would break loose. Now, Peacock charges uh, what the anarchist, anarcho capitalist, rather, uh, what, what they object to is not government, but the fact that gives rise to the need for one, the need for outside, impartial observers to objectively evaluate and control the use of force in society. Now understand the, the, the implications of this. In other words, people, uh, we, the citizens, you see, are emotionally, emotionally whim-riddled philosophical monstrosities out to demolish objectivity. Wahaha! <laughs> <laughs> but, you see, thanks. Thank you, God, for law and order instituting governments to restore society. Thank you, Mr. Government. Now you see that Rand and the objectivist intellectuals suffer from a sort of Hobbesian sense of life, you could say. You see, the government is here to protect us from ourselves. And even though they are only human beings like the rest of us, by placing the magic label government upon themselves, we, the rest of us, are required and expected to pledge allegiance, you see. Now, you see, it's only the philosopher kings of Rand's proper government are capable of determining objectivity, while the masses are wholly dependent upon the power elite. Now, <laughs> of course, the funny thing here is that, is that according to objectivist epistemology, Reason is an attribute of the individual. I'm going to repeat that. According to objectivist epistemology, reason is an attribute of the individual. I'll let that sink in. Okay, so, now, this line of bullshit argument, argumentation, rather, uh, is followed by other uh, objectivists. It's not limited to um, Peikoff. Uh, another popular objectivist would be Harry Binns Wanger, and yet another object, uh, popular uh, objectivist thinker would be Robert uh, Beninato, who wrote uh, in his article um, The Contradiction in Anarchism. You can look it up, uh, Robert uh, Beninato. Uh, the contradiction in anarchism. Just to quote this one section here. Now listen to this. Quote, Exactly who determines what use of force is initiatory or coercive, and what is defensive or retaliatory? By what process is, is that determination made? Or to put it in terms of rights, who determines whether, in any given use of force, rights have been violated? And thus, who is the aggressor and who is the victim? By what, what, by what procedure? What theory or interpretation of rights is to be used? Rand's? Uh, uh, Lenin's? Uh, for society, how are such determinations made with finality? And how is the verdict, in, in verdict enforced? As a corollary, who determines which agency is a protection agency and which is a mere gang of aggressors? By what method and standard? You see, anarchists sincerely believe that they are merely advocating competition in the protection of rights. In fact, what their position would necessitate is competition in defining what rights are. Unquote. Now, the fact that Beninato is unable to answer his own question speaks volumes, okay? <laughs> he retreats uh, into legal subjectivism by suggesting that his questions uh, cannot, be, cannot be answered by objective methods. The premise that we are expected to swallow, this is what we're expected to swallow, okay? The various disputes that arise in society require the objectivity of a single agency charged with the responsibility of defining objective law. A single agency holding a monopoly 
over this. Wow. Oh, those special epistemological philosopher kings. Wow, I just I stand in awe before them. The epistemological philosopher kings. Is there something mystical about this government su such that it, and only it, is capable of giving a fair trial to someone, uh, let's say, accused of murder? even if another agency follows the same procedures and has the same concern with arriving at a just outcome? And we, we can very well ask exactly who determines what is true and what is false, uh, what is good and what is, who, uh, what is evil. Who, who, who determines this? You see, you see, here's the subjectivist becoming uh, a subjectivist, or the objectivist becoming a subjectivist. <laughs> the objectivist, by this line of argumentation, is turning into a zombie subjectivist himself, you see. And by what process is that determination made, they ask? What epistemologic theory is to be used? Rands, Hegel's, Kant's, you know, and it, it just, just this bullshit line of argument just goes on this way. Now, I, I have no patience <laughs> with uh, subjectivists like Ben and Otto. They are impossible to argue with because every time you propose a, a solution, they retreat into their subjectivist catechism with questions like, but who is to decide? Or what if someone disagrees? Objectivity is something that we're all capable of. It's not just resigned to a philosophical elite to her... Uh, who are uh, put over to rule over us, okay? <laughs> By who are the, who are these philosopher kings that have this exclusivity on uh, epistemological objective knowledge? Uh, yeah, you know, I per I really actually I, you know I prefer to deal with a Randian minarchist who believes in objective knowledge, including objective knowledge in the sphere of justice. That would really be nice. Victor Pross, anarchist artist, signing out.